The following podcast is set in a time long ago and a galaxy far away, but none of us still want to cause you any harm mentally, physically, or emotionally. We are a group of people playing a Star Wars 5e campaign and there is a chance that we may offend you unintentionally. There may be scenes of violence, sexual nature, or comedy that could offend. Just know that you have been warned, you are listening to this podcast at your own risk. We are just a group of blind or visually impaired tabletop role-playing gamers that enjoy Star Wars. In a time longer ago than what we can remember. In a galaxy that we have never heard of. It is a time, it is a galaxy, it is a place that we find these adventurers in. A Jedi that is not fully sold on the teachings of the Order and one Jedi that is fully committed. A travel-weary Ewok bounty hunter that has a love for some drink. A junk droid known as Johnny Six and a Wookiee who is more than just addicted to spice join together in an adventure that will tell tales, land them in peril, and allow them to find out who they truly are in the end. Join us each week as we follow this motley crew in the adventure of their lifetime. Music provided by www.tabletopaudio.com A Star Wars 5e podcast brought to you by www.knightsofthebraille.com For more information, be sure to check us out. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Richard. I'm going to be the game master for this group in the Star Wars 5 universe. We're going to try recording this here for a little while. We'll see how it goes. But uh, in this first episode, we're going to go around our virtual tabletop here, like I do with the other podcast. And... We're going to introduce our characters, and whenever it's your turn, just tell us a little bit about your character, and, you know, uh, describe your character, and basically introduce yourself. Uh, We'll start with um, Ken. How about let's start with you? Ken, I will be playing Zane Boulder. He is human, but with a greenish skin tone, purplish tinted eyes which will be explained through gameplay and backstory. Uh, he is he is kind of against, not against the Jedi Order, but does not believe completely in the absolute of the Jedi Order, so he's always pushing against, questioning it. Uh, he tries to walk the gray area that most people don't tend to recognize. It's either light or dark for them. Just kind of walks that tight tight rope. Yeah, that's Zane for a little bit. So basically what Ken is saying is he will cut off your head if he needs to, or he will leave it attached if he doesn't want to. Uh, let's uh, let's go in alphabetical order then, and we'll go with uh, Lobo. I'm going to Kane Hachani tonight. He's uh, six foot, got light skin, fair skin, white, long hair, and he wears his Jedi Knight robe over his and he believes light side that Jedi are efficient people to help spread peace throughout the galaxy. Um, what the Jedi need. And I'm Fernand. Alright. And uh, now let's go with uh, Mostly Blind Gamer. Not sure if you want me to tell your real name or not, so <laughs> I'll go with your <laughs> screen name. Alright. So, uh, <laughs> pardon. Um, I will be playing Moodoo Moonrack. Um, who is uh, an Ewok? Um, Moodoo is uh, obviously uh, short and small and very furry. Um, uh, black eyes, uh, brown um, brown fur generally, and red hair. Um, wears uh, uh, wears light armor. Uh, sorry, combat armor. I'm sorry. I feel like I, I lost. No track. Either way. Um, so Moodoo um, is generally a nice guy. Um, light side, you know. Um, so what happened with him was um, he was a pretty decent young hunter in uh, the forest moon of Endor, and then a lot of crazy stuff happened, what with the Empire and the Rebel Alliance and what have you, and it was a big old mess. And he took advantage of all this commotion um, to try and pull off a little um, a little uh, mischievous crime of his, and um he stole some things he shouldn't have, and he hid in a rebel ship, 
And what do you know it, the ship left Endor, and he found himself alone in a planet on the Outer Rim. Um, and uh, he felt like this was some kind of a uni for universal retribution for for his, his crime. Um, so he had to figure out what to do with his life, and he's since become a bounty hunter. Um, but um, he's vowed never to steal again, um, and he wants to try and make up for his for his crimes by um, by protecting the galaxy from from criminals and uh, and such riffraff. Um, now uh, coming off as a really nice guy, but uh, he does like to gamble. He will have a drink here and there, and uh, he'll do what he has to do to get his mark within reason, of course. Excellent. I can see him like looking at the, oh, look, there's a shiny, and he goes to take the shiny, and the ship leaves with him. Uh, I yeah. like that. Yeah. Never again. <laughs> Never, again. <laughs> Never again. Not until there's a bigger shiny, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe one more time. One more time. Uh, I, like I said, I'm Richard. I am your uh, game master, and this is our first episode of the Star Wars uh, 5e universe. We I've done a couple one shots in it, um, in which. Uh, Lobo and Ken have both played in, and I do believe in the last one shot that I did, um, both of your characters died in it, I think. Not yeah, yours. Wipe the floor uh, with this. <laughs> that's okay, because your character will die in my campaign, exactly. trust me. Um, that's what everybody says. Uh, but I am fairly new to the Star Wars 5e universe, so this will be a learning experience for me as well as the players. Uh, mistakes will be made, not on my end, it's always their end, I don't care what they say. Uh, I do like to joke and have fun, so there will hopefully be a lot of laughs in here. But as uh, we settle down to begin this game, you all um, find yourselves in, in fairly different locations. Uh, Kane and Zane, you find yourselves in a cantina eating a, a bite of lunch. Um, having, you know, a drink if you want it, a uh, non-alcoholic drink or an alcoholic one, depending on whatever you want to have. Uh, the cantina is fairly lively here at lunch. Uh, there's a little bit of, you know, music and singing and mostly, um, you know, chatter around as everybody gets their noonday meal. Um, the, uh, and what's the Ewok's name again? Moomba? Uh, Moodoo. Moodoo? Okay. Um, it's, go it's going to take me a, a few sessions to get uh, the names yeah. down. Except for Kane and Zane, which are easy because they just rhyme. <laughs> uh, but um, Moodoo, right? Yep. Moodoo, okay. Uh, Moodoo happens to be in this cantina as well. And this is a traditional, you find yourselves in a tavern kind of opening. Except in Star Wars, it's a cantina. Um... <laughs> Moodoo has just managed to get or leave the space station and walk into the cantina, seeing the two Jedi, although he does not know that they are Jedi, they are eating lunch or drinking. Um, he is concerned of what he is going to do, how he is going to survive, and whether or not he is uh, willing to travel back to Endor or to... Or if he thinks this may be a sign that he needs to expand his horizon. Uh, we will start with um, both Zane and Kane at the table. As you all sitting here uh, eating your lunch, you notice an Ewok walk into the cantina. So, yes, I noticed him too. He looks concerned. Where's my head? Uh, um... Fernando, can you do me a favor and get a little closer to your mic? Yes, sir. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, I thought that Fernando was knows me. that I'm Fernando knows I'm hard of hearing, so he's like making it as difficult as possible. His character <laughs> dies in about five minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah. they they raise their hand to uh, Mudu, and what does Mudu do here? Mudu uh, do right. So as a, a, a typical. Uh, Slightly world weary uh, bounty hunter would have, would do, um, uh, you know, look around the room, um, they see if they seem to be at all threatening. But, um, um, roll me a perception check. 
All righty. Um, First roll. Are you keeping track of my perception? <laughs> um. Uh, you just you roll a d twenty, add your yeah. modifier. Yeah, I I get you. Um, which is zero. All right, I was just trying to find it. I'm not particularly perceptive, just like in real life. <clears throat> <laughs> um, <laughs> twenty. Wow. Um, you look around and you you see the busy cantina. You um see that these two people who have waved you over have a chair that is empty at their table and from your role you can sense that there's no ill will meant towards you but extreme friendliness to someone who is uh travel weary world weary and just all in all they're they're being kind to you mm -hmm. all right so i i uh, approach the table and in motion to just sit on the chair if they'll if they'll have me and nod all right um what do you two do as he approaches and sits in the chair? He's still looking. You, yeah. Did you move away from your mic again? How's this? Oh, that is excellent. Oh, Sweet. I had to just uh, raise the volume. So gotcha. I'd like to just smile at him, like, why don't you take a load off, my dear friend? Take a seat. Mm -hmm. I, I will motion for them to bring food and drink one of the uh, stuff um... of the cantina. A uh, a Twi'lek woman comes over to you and uh, you you wanted me over here. You ready to place a reorder? Uh, yes, whatever the young sir would. And and she looks to uh, Mudu and speaks in you know galactic basic. Uh, mm -hmm. what well, what will you have? I uh, gesture with my right hand as to raise a mug. Uh, raise. Uh, three fingers on oh. my left hand, and uh, and nod, and hope for some kind of a pleasant drink. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at you and smiles. Would you like calf, tea, water, juice, alcohol? <laughs> she looks at the two Jedi and shrugs, <laughs> turns around, and walks off. Um, <clears throat> You are all on a, in a cantina on a planet located near Kessel, which you all know from, you know, just your travels that it is known for spice and for coaxium. Um, you all know that this planet, you know, has deep caves bored, uh, mined down like deep into the surface. Um, and you all hear this group of men talking over like towards the corner and talking about um a certain mine that was lost years ago may have been found uh here recently that uh there, there's uh rumors and the legends say the myths say that there's a ton of uh of treasure located in this in this place um they're talking about hiring a crew to you know travel there and to get into the mines you know, to find a map to get in there and, you know, get the treasure for themselves. Basically, they're trying to get in a, uh, a, uh, quick, rich, get quick, rich type of scheme. Um, and there, a table right beside you, there's a, uh, a humanoid man with a salt and pepper beard that says, uh, they think that they know the location, but I know the location. I just got to find a crew that can handle the the rigors and really need some protection. And he's talking to um, a man who looks very similar to him, if not, you know, his identical twin. Uh, it, it's hard to tell the, um, from your exact position because they're not like exactly beside you. But we'll say they're off to like your right. Um, and with the hustle and bustle of the cantina, you can't exactly get a good view of them along with the uh, the smoke that's in the air. But from the glimpses that you've been able to get, they do look ex ex uh, <clears throat> excuse me extremely similar. Then you hear um, one of them saying that uh, I I am the one that found the map to the wave echo mine on foremost. He said, I intend to reopen it. The idiot's over there. And he, he doesn't point, but you know exactly who he's talking to or, or talking about. 
because you can hear them. They're loud and boisterous. Um, he says, uh, but there's those over there who have heard this rumor as well. And I, I have a feeling that they're working for someone who has their has their eyes on the wave echo mind as well. Um, and his brother goes, oh, you mean the Black Ranker? And they both like start whispering in a in a hushed tone. Uh, the three of you have heard of the Black Rancor, and at this, your ears would perk up. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, you're actually on the, uh, excuse me, the city planet of Nar Shadik, or Nar Shada. Um, Star Wars names are like kind of like dwarven names. You can't really pronounce them because Jaws doesn't like them. Um, and as y'all are sitting here, these two brothers get up and walk out and shortly thereafter the group of five men get up and walk out as well and quickly their tables are filled by other patrons as the twilak or twilak woman brings the drinks back to you they are a uh, red colored liquid that smells sweetly of a kind of punch and she looks at you all and says there you go. I think you wanted three of the fruit buzz. Uh, I hope that's what you wanted. If not, uh, I do apologize. Well, thank you, ma'am. We'll do with whatever is. This is alcoholic. Yes. To know <laughs> oh. <laughs> It tastes like Hawaiian punch with alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. Very simple drink. Um, not too overly intoxicating. Um, in fact, it would take several to even get you to feeling any effects. <laughs> so like wine club. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I'd like to just keep drinking on like the apple juice I have and see if the Ewok would like my new cup. Uh, would you like my, my cup, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> wow. As, as, he, as he drains it dry. <laughs> uh, what is your name, friend? Moodoo! Moodoo! Moodoo, huh? Her. Well, I am Kane Highland. I am Zane Boulder. As he sips on his... He's gonna look over at Kane and be like, You know, you should live a little. You know? I give you the side eye, like... <laughs> Zane, you know, we shouldn't be drinking this. Uh, general Masters won't be happy. Oh, Kane, if you never live, you'll never truly experience life. I live for the battle, my friends. But did you guys catch what those people were talking about? Yes, it's very uh, interesting. I think we uh, should actually finish our drink, move to investigate. Good. Um, Mudu, would you like to come with us after this, or do you have any plans? <laughs> okay, Zane, we might be in need of a translator droid. Unless you understand him? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend. I don't speak your dialect. <laughs> uh, DM, is there a way that I can send out like a message uh, to like the Jedi Order or somebody, or like what I know how I can get like a translator droid? Um, you can. Uh, but Mudu could also nod his head to indicate that he will go with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can send out for a translator droid if you wish. Um, chances are that you may come across one. You know, yeah. using your force powers, you can see one being provided in the very near future. Uh, should you <laughs> take this mission and accept it as your own? Uh, <laughs> I think about like sending a message, and I just feel something in the force telling me to just wait. And I don't send them. Strangely, the Force sends you a vision of Santa Claus. No, wait your turn. It's not Christmas yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm confused with sending me weird images. Mm. Um, mm. But mm. you... I, I finish I finish my other drink, stand up, uh, point to the door, look very impatient, and... Indeed, we shut up. Um, you both being attuned to the Force... Uh, you get a feeling to follow after the salt and pepper, the man with the beard that is salt and pepper, both of them. Mm, perfect. I'd like to go outside, mm -hmm. see if we can see him out there. Um, 
You roll me a perception. That's okay. I'm also going to do a perception check uh-huh. around. That's an 18? I, um, you can barely see the top of his head, but you recognize the <laughs> the type of hood that he was wearing up over his head as he tries to be inconspicuous in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a like normal lunchtime crowd, you know, the different restaurants and taverns and all that being around here. And I'm going to say taverns repeatedly because that's D and D. Um, <laughs> it's the cantinas, excuse me. Um, you barely see him off to your left, heading towards what is the uh, where you know the shuttle bays and the space stations to be. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, go ahead. I was just gonna tell him, uh, my companions. I think I see him over there, guys. Let's follow. Um, all Moodoo sees, even though he didn't roll a perception <laughs> roll, is like uh, butt cheeks and oh. legs. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, I see the black hole. You know, I see the black. Oh hole. no. <laughs> um. So you uh, you do see like you would see his head if he did not have his hood up, uh, the, the back of his head. So. Um, like I said, he's off to your left. Are y'all going to follow, I assume? Um, I nod. Okay. Uh, as you all look around also with your 18, um, you would have noticed that the group of five individuals are following him as well. And not necessarily at a discreet distance. Um, it appears as though that they are following him because they may have heard him say that he has the map. I will whisper it to uh, to Zane. Zane, I think those fun of follow this man as well. Yeah, I would expect them so when he was obviously talking to a little bit too loud about his information. Rookie mistake. <clears throat> no, uh, it's a DM thing to, you know, so he can get y'all on this adventure. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's a DM trick. Um, we'll say he had too much alcohol. Yeah. Um, was was slamming too many back and got too excited. Yeah. Too many of them uh, fruit but punch drinks, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and like I said, you see him, you know, heading towards the space station, and you all are following him. And as you continue to follow, you notice that the group of five are getting a little bit closer to him and it seems as though from one instance to the next uh the group of five have lost track of him and have now not necessarily broken up like they're going their individual ways but they're not as tight-knit of a group as they was they are uh somewhat dispersed but no more than 10 feet apart from the other uh, it's like they are looking around trying to figure out where he went. Do y'all continue following or do you stop? Hmm. Do uh, you I sneak around. Right, that's important. Good, good point. Yeah, do we okay. still have eyes on the salt and pepper bearded guy? Um, you do still see him. Uh, okay. On a scale of <laughs> 1 to 10, you are seeing him at about a 1 right now. I'll give you a 2. You can see him at a two, much longer, and you may lose track of him. Right. So, uh, so I, I, I'm gonna sneak around everybody, uh, since they're since they're breaking apart. Sneak around and get much closer to him, um, so I can so I can properly track him. Okay. Um, roll me a uh, stealth check. With that, I'll let you roll that with advantage because I really like that concept. All right. Um. Zane and Kane, roll me a perception check. I got a 15 plus 4, 19. 19. Um, you're able to keep track of him. Uh, you will say with your stealth in this that you are probably less than 10 feet away from him. Mm-hmm. So. And, able, and able to keep check on him with no difficulty. And hopefully signal to the others where, where we are. Just discreetly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you're waving wildly, but they cannot see you due to the crowd, you know, and you're like, hey, hey, hey. 
<laughs> I got a 17. Uh, okay. I got a 19. All right. Um, from behind you, you hear a voice. It's always good to have a twin brother. <laughs> oh, gee. Uh, gonna, I noticed you. Go ahead. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to not even turn around and be like, nice. It is always good. I couldn't help but notice you all in the tavern, not really seeming to care about what I said. Oh, we could. Anyway. We just didn't show it. Ah, okay. Very good. You said the right answer then. So, where's your little Ewok friend? Following my brother, I'm sure? I Maybe. Assume. I'm not sure. He's kind of small. I can't really see where he's going. <laughs> It's very well. I know exactly where he's going. And I assume that you all happen to get your friend's comlink code? Not at all. <laughs> uh, we can retroactively say that y'all did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know how to be... It would um, make everybody's lives easier. <laughs> <laughs> it would. Um, so be sure to calm him and tell him to meet us at Space Station X with Shuttle Bay 672. Because that's where we're going. My brother is leading those ruffian idiots on a wild goose chase. Mm. Good, smart. I like that about you guys. It pays to be sneaky on a planet like this, especially in hut space. I assume that you know about huts. Indeed. Uh, exactly. One one can never be too careful, but I get the sense of you that there's probably more more to you than meets the eye and I get the feeling that I can trust you. That our destinies are linked, so to say. I mean you do have some interesting info that we need to know about and you seem to need help according to what you said so at least for the moment or pass the line this is true from your statement i assume that you are jedi because they are assumption. they're the only ones that talk about alignment that i've run across i just smile at it <laughs> like luke skywalker <laughs> like to smile I'm not a Jedi. <laughs> um, so while he is talking with you all, Moodoo, you are staring at probably the left butt cheek of uh, his brother, Zundar. <laughs> um, keep, him, keep an eye on him um, as he is uh, walking around the city, heading into different areas, and he looks back over his shoulder but never looks down to see you because you are being extremely stealthy um there it is <laughs> yeah nobody ever looks down or up never <laughs> um and uh as you are following him you hear a crackle over your comm link Udo, we found the other brother huh? meet us at uh what was it like uh station mm -hmm. or S space station uh, yeah, space 672 um so I go ahead I gather my uh, my surroundings do I know where it is is it reasonable um, for me to know how to get there or should yeah, I try and find yeah out? because that is the space station that you left from. That I, right okay then I so I head straight there very annoyed that all my hard work <laughs> was uh, for nothing <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie. annoyed and very interested in getting another drink once I get to the space station bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will say that uh, <laughs> you all managed to get to the space station without any difficulty that uh, the five ruffians lose track of um, Zundar, Gundar's brother. Um <laughs> And you are in the uh, bar area of the uh, space station. Uh, Moodoo, you are there. And you managed to get there before the others do. As um, Gundar had to stop by and get a few things in order at his office. Um, and you're sitting there drinking, uh, we'll say, uh, 
some kind of combination of a uh, space Jack and Coke or Crown and Coke. <laughs> um, we'll call it Coruscant and Coke or something like that. You know, uh, <laughs> but you are you're there drinking again um, when these three walk in, followed shortly by um, Zundar as well. And mm. I wave them towards my table. They uh, Zundar and Gundar both come and sit down at the table, and strangely enough, there are three other chairs. I follow and sit next to Mudu. I also sit, and I uh, huh? look over at Kane and say, we're going to have to get some type of for our friend. Um, As y'all are sitting there, um, Gundar looks around. It's not really full, um, kind of a sparse crowd here. Uh, he says, okay, here's the deal. I need some help. I need someone to protect my wagon load. In other words, my uh, equipment that I'm sending to Foremost. Uh, that's all that I'm willing to tell right now. And he looks around because you all know there's ears everywhere. Of course. Always. I do have a pilot and a ship. And I'm going to go ahead and set things up on the planet but i need you all to protect the cargo as it is shipped because the the path to the planet has been known here recently to house pirates and ruffians and people who cannot seem to earn a decent living other than attacking ships and robbing people of their hard-earned wealth your I mission. sit up on the chair and rub my thumb and index finger in his direction. I assume you yes. want to know how much I'm willing to pay? <clears throat> well, of course. You're asking for a job. How would you split what we... I will pay you each 200 credits for this simple task of making securing the load to the planet. Should be a fairly simple task. You know, but Zane it is. Looks down, gives a little smirk when anybody says it should be simple, and he kind of chuckles. Well, <laughs> you know where we are, right? I very well do. Your the ship that I have is armored. It does have gun turrets. Assuming that mm. any of you know how to fire a weapon, of course. Mm. So. It, like I said, should be fairly simple, but you are well equipped if things do head south. But that's and still asking look, a lot for 200. It I look at the be. Jedi and nod. Um, roll me a um, persuasion. Uh, that, no, yeah, Zane. That may get kind of confusing. <laughs> okay. Six, a 21. Ooh. He looks at you. I can go up to 300 credit. I'm going to look over at hmm. Kane and our little friend with a raised what eyebrow. If, hmm, that seems fair, but what if we're more interested in the treasure that you talked about finding? He looks at you, assuming that there is treasure. I have not been into this mine myself. It is just a rumor that this mine does have treasure. I will not know until I can get a crew there and to actually mine it myself before I know what's in there. We could possibly negotiate a deal to where the treasure is split. However be it, it will not be split equally. I'm maybe willing to go 20% of the treasure for you three. But there's three of us, about 30%. So what you're asking is 10% for each of you? Indeed. If my f companions agree to that. Of I nod. Hmm. I see. The treasure, you're going to need a crew to help you mine it. Let's just put it down. You're going to need a crew from start to finish. So exactly. why not just hire us on as your crew, and we can negotiate dividing up the treasures. Of course, you'll get majority share. We know that. But also, in exchange, you give us information. The cr the mining crew I have, but security I could use. 
he looks over to his brother who nods and his brother Zundar says 10% for each of you plus the 300 credits apiece. We're providing everything else, the ship, the equipment, and all. If you are willing to agree to be security and to help out where needed, 10% plus 300 credits. Mm -hmm. I nod in agreement. I smile. I agree to that. And Agreed, then. This is um, Zundar still, but be warned. We do not know if there's anything in there. We just happen to come across this information. You could say it kind of was downloaded into our hard drive, and it laughs, so to speak. <laughs> um, but it is a rumor, and we're hoping that there is plenty down there which should make us all extremely rich, including you all. Oh, we should find out. Um, <laughs> you hear Moodoo uh, say that, and you also hear another loud... Um, and you see a tall, black-furred Wookiee walk in with white stuff around his upper lip. And he's stumbling and looks absolutely crazed right now. Oh, no. what was that? Sir? You guys see him? And he... Uh, <laughs> would they know, know of this Wookiee? Um, no. I like sneer at him. Disgusting. Onto the influence. Um, <laughs> Gundar says, ah, here comes your pilot. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I jump out of a chair and hide behind the Jedi. <laughs> I look over at that Wookiee and look back at the brothers. 350. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Um, and they look at you, believe it or not, he flies better when he is spiced out. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna look back at the Wookiee at 325. I'm telling you, he he and he looks at you, looks at the Wookiee 325 and you have to provide him the spice. Because you don't want to be around him when he doesn't have spice. And he points and you see a droid uh, that is about six feet tall, um, gears winding coming in that is six different colors. Uh, Zundar says, because look what he did to Johnny. He was one, but now he is Johnny Six because he has six different <laughs> droid parts making up one body. <laughs> and the droid walks in and you hear him say I told you not to take that it was not spice it was instead white pepper I am sorry that you thought that this was spice it was not my fault and the Wookiee turns around and growls like he is extremely ticked off I do not care that you are about to sneeze it is not my fault I did not tell you to snort it and the Wookiee grabs him by the head, and that's when Zundar steps up and says, Oh, no, Gurker, you got a job. And the Wookiee turns and looks and raises his hairy eyebrow and goes, Arr! And the droid, uh, Johnny Six, says, I will not translate that. That is beyond my programming. That's a fear, my friend. I speak Wookiee. And it's best that we don't translate <laughs> The Wookiee walks over and sits down in the empty chair and looks at uh, you all and then looks back at uh, Zundar and Gundar and begins talking in Wookiee. And the droid translates, he is wanting to know if this is the crew that you said you were going to hire to head to Formos. And Zundar and Gundar both nod and say yes this is a crew that kind of fell into our laps as well um gurker the the wookie looks around at you all again and kind of shrugs before pulling out a pouch of something and that's connected to his um like bandolier strap and tilts his head back and pours a white substance down his nostril and snorts loudly <laughs> Um, and then he grunts and growls, and um, the droid will translate. He says, let's go flying, then. Let's. 
And hopefully the droid translates. He does. <laughs> he does. He's saying that he doesn't understand why there's a translation droid here. Everybody's been communicating just fine. <laughs> oh, my dear friend, we don't speak your language. <laughs> he says he understands yours just fine. He does not understand the problem here. <laughs> Shrug. <laughs> <laughs> the Wookiee looks down like behind the chair and goes and like kind of jumps back like ah oh! and begins to growl and chirp and you know do all kind of like Wookiee speak like oh there's an there's another one they're everywhere they're like gremlins <laughs> <laughs> so um Zundar and Gundar look at you all and says. Well, it's time for us to leave and for y'all to get acquainted with your pilot. Uh, in case you cannot understand him, and they look at you all and, and we can understand why. His name is Gurker, and believe it or not, he is probably one of the best pilots that you can find here on the planet. Speak well of the planet, does it? <laughs> they smile as they uh, get up and leave and... It's time for our flight. We will uh, hopefully see you there. And they walk out of the uh, cantina. Um, Gurker, Gurker looks at you all and goes, and he does his growling, which translates to, I am pilot, fly you there. Uh, and Wookiee, I'll reply, and we will try to protect you. Um, he uh, holds up his right hand like in a high five, like, he was glad that somebody can understand him because uh, he points to the droid and then like mimics pulling his hair out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, reluctantly give him a high five. Uh, he, he, he's very gentle when he does it. Right. And then uh, under the table, I like wipe my hand on like my. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Um, so he's going to look over at Kane and just shake his head. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gurker holds up another vial that he has in his bandolier. Instead of like bolts in it, he has like little ampules all around. You know, <laughs> um, he he holds one up to you. Like you want some? I shake my head. He he will shrug and then um he will begin talking, saying that um um you all will be crewing a G nine rigger. Uh, light freighter um, that it will be filled with all kinds of uh, mining supplies and will be heading to he looks around and whispers to foremost and that um, we will uh, head out tomorrow morning because the freighter is still getting loaded today um, hopefully they will get it loaded earlier and that they can you all can leave out sooner rather than later um he tells you that there is sleeping quarters on the ship that if you would like to rest here you can or you know you can continue exploring the city if you wish um but as soon as the uh freighter is loaded he would like to leave immediately thereafter because of the way that the black rancor has been and sabotaging certain things. My friend, what is the black rancor? I whisper. Um, the droid comes over and actually sits down in the chair beside you uh, <clears throat> and says, the black rancor is a criminal of the underworld here and has mm -hmm. been known to attack several ships, rob people, kill people, murder people, sacrifice people to some other godlike mm -hmm. being and in other words take all of the things that he can take for himself he is a highly sought after individual but he has his fingers in everything and cannot be caught no one has seemed to be able to find him to capture him or to arrest him in any way shape or form and he keeps going on and on giving you a very long detail he stands approximately five foot six or seven foot <laughs> five we're not really sure and he weighs anywhere from 100 to 255 pounds he, he, whenever he was okay. in school and... Alright, alright, thank you John Wow, this is interesting He's gonna um, look at Wookiee and say in Wookiee, is there an off switch? 
<laughs> Which means he has looked for one for a long time, but has yet to be able to find it. <laughs> yeah, I look at the droid. Which he understands to mean how high is the bounty for him. He seems to pause for a second and says, the DM does not know. He has not come to that <laughs> part of the story yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> you mean hot? Uh, we, he looks and says, mm, the last known amount that I have heard of when the last update that I took last week, which was 6.792A dash QBR NIN dash 307 over 56, the bounty was somewhere between the amount of 1,500 credits to 3,000 credits. Upon successful uh, arresting of the known criminal known as the Black Ranker, who in 6th grade was a very good student and he was very athletic and able to play hide and seek <laughs> like there was no other one around. He was never found, so I he was really like good at <laughs> and uh, nod inquisitively at the Jedi. Indeed. Well, despite the bounty, we must bring him to order, right, King? Or Zane, I'm sorry. <laughs> bring him to order would be ideal. Indeed. And Plus, we... it wouldn't hurt to get a bit of more cred. Uh, I mean, you could take it. I, I don't. Just doing the good deeds. Doing the good deeds. We should deeds. probably. There you go again, Boy Scout. What? What? That's for the good of the people. Yeah, and also the good of my wallet. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh. <laughs> Which the droid translates as, he says, a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, indeed, we do need to eat. We probably need to let our <laughs> order know, uh, Zane, that we're going to go to this other planet. Zane stands up. I'll leave that to you, Boy Scout. You know mm -hmm. they don't enjoy talking to me. Indeed. I'll take care of it. Zane's gonna <laughs> go out and explore. He uh, he's gonna um, call back over. I'll meet you guys at the ship. Nightfall, then. Uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm gonna so, head out, too. So, um, y'all three are going to explore the city together? Or do y'all want to explore it separately? Hmm. Uh... I wouldn't mind either way. I just want to make a stop at the Jedi uh, Council or, or uh, Temple or whatever first. Mm. There is not one on this planet, um, but Ooh. you can send a hollow okay. to them. Perfect. I, I will send uh, just a quick uh, hollow saying, we've caught a trace of the Black Rancor. We've taken a job, Zane and I, to uh, take a guard a shipment to... A thor forthos, I foremost, believe. foremost, and yeah. we hope to get more information on him and bring him to justice. Um, so your transmission is sent. Uh, I'm not sure in the SW5E universe if, how much they cost, if they cost anything. I'm not going to go with charging for them, okay. you know, uh, because that's just like getting nitpicky. Yeah. Um, and I just I don't like being nitpicky. Uh, unless it benefits me, of course. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll be nitpicky. Um, so we'll say that you sent your hollow off. Uh, what do the other two of you want to do? Do y'all want y'all want to, all three to explore the city together? Do y'all have different places that you would like to go, or what? What would y'all like to do? Hmm. So for now, I'm interested in the in the snow bounty. Um, so. Um... Is he a high-profile enough individual that we can just ask around and, and find him right now? Um, you'll have to try and find out. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> um, we, so maybe maybe we could we could stay in the canteen. And, no, wait, we're at the we're at the space station. Um, mm -hmm. but we can we can. Uh, um, I, I'll give look you for um, some particularly shady-looking individuals in the yeah. space. Station. My That's what I was going to tell you. There, there's some, some higher end here. It's not like higher end like um, a suite, like in a motel type of thing. But um, I think like middle class is the highest end that is on the city planet. Uh, and then you have all the way down to places that are, you know, worse than the ghetto. 
Um, and again, you know, for anybody listening, I'm not making fun of anybody who is, has to listen, has to live in those places. I understand, but this is just for like description purpose. So you have like, I guess you call it the slums. You know, it's, it's a good way to describe it, where there's not really buildings. It's more like shanties, people sleeping on you know the outside. Um, that's where you find most of like your very low end cheap made spice and um like brothels and the, the seediest part of the town or the city excuse me and yeah you, know, you have anywhere from from that the worst part to the best part being like middle class you know depending on where you want to go um will determine what i describe to you all right i'll uh as i point to the the spice Bandolier. And the droid would say, eh, he says, he says, we will definitely need some spice for the Wookiee. And yeah, w- the Wookiee nods emphatically. <laughs> and and then, anywhere we can find spice, we should be able to find information. Um, and then the Wookiee will pat you on the head. <laughs> like, you're such a good Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I shake my ears. But, but yes, the wiki would know where to get spice from, obviously. <laughs> and the droid replies, but we don't need to help him with his addiction because whenever you are addicted, there's a 95.2% chance that you will never be cured of your addiction. And even though he may fly better while he is snorting the spice, it is not a good for us because it's not good for his system. I jump in the no- air and slap the droid on the face. <laughs> he said, "Ow!" He did have a good point. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Zane uh, stands there and says, "Me and the uh, big guy pointing to the Wookie, we'll go and get a supply. And uh, Boy Scout, you just stay up here, you know, and be a good, good Boy Scout." <laughs> we need. I need to find more information. I think this. I think Mudu is on the right track. We we need more info on the Black Horn. You That's get true. your substance, a, and we'll get information. Good. There's some other things I need to look in. And the Wookiee will go, wow. <laughs> like he's mimicking, snorting some of the spice. Oh boy! So, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to open a tab and charge the the brothers Dar for this. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely enough, they already have a tab, and <laughs> most of the signature is the Wookiee's name. No. <laughs> and he grunts and, and, and does his howling, and the uh, droid will translate as saying, he works for Spice and Spice alone. Mm. Well, if they expect me to supply and keep him supplied, I'm going to be charging them with interest. <laughs> So, do you all want to head to the seedier part of town, or...? We'll all head there, but once we get there, we'll break off and the two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonderful! Y'all have already broken the second rule of uh, D&D. <laughs> Never split the party. Yeah. Never uh, split the party. you're happy about it, it makes it a lot more likely for us all to be brutally murdered. Exactly. Despite <laughs> contrary opinion, yeah. Um, <laughs> you all uh, walk down, and you can tell as you're walking that the uh, buildings, the environment is slowly getting worse and worse. Uh, you know, you may start off like seeing a piece of graffiti here, um, and it may go 100 feet before you get another one, but eventually the graffiti is side by side and on top of each other. Uh, and in your walking and you're traveling down to the senior part of the city, you have even come across dead bodies in the street. Um, upon some of the walls, you see the image of a rancor that is drawn in black. Um, do not ask me to describe a rancor because I cannot see, and I'll just tell you that it looks like a big worm or something. I don't know. Um... <laughs> But you all, uh, you know, see these little symbols all over the place, and you come across a couple of big ones. That and one in particular that stands out is a black rancor holding several planets in his hand. 
uh, you come across like some uh, cantinas down here, uh, a couple of little shacks that are, um, you know, basically just dive bars. Um, some of them little shacks are like places you can get something to eat if you're willing to eat it. You see um, some people sitting on like the corners of uh, like streets and all for what the streets are down here. Um, definitely not looking in the best shape. Uh, there's some fire pits down here, like barrels. People are standing around. Um, the humanoids, there's aliens uh, of different races. Um, some of them are missing limbs. Some of them have obviously seen better days in their life. Real quick, a rancorn is this reptilian creature that walks on two stubby legs. It's huge, full of muscles. It has this proportionately long arms to capture its prey. It's got a flat head, but it's got like a maw full of teeth. That's usually like a bunch of saliva coming out of it, you know? Yeah. Funny, that's exactly how I was going to describe it if y'all had asked. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um,. Well, I appreciate that. I, I do. Uh, any any time you can help me, I, I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, but y'all are now in the uh, the lower slums of the area mm-hmm. of the, the city planet. So before we uh, split, me me and the Wookie will go one way. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, use Force Whisper uh, to speak to Kane. Uh, you no, know, basically, it's a message. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. But to speak directly to him, and I'm going to say, keep your. I'm sorry. What? Keep my eyes what? Shut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, keep your eyes. I'm assuming open. Was that eyes wide shut? What? Huh? <laughs> I think it not keying off. Of course, um, it was too strong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was a forced shout. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, huh. it not anymore. Welcome back. Uh, so okay. now we know that. Sorry about that. My, <laughs> my it's all good. Discord likes to cut off. It's all, all right. Kane is now walking around with his eyes shut. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what you're saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, uh, you know, keep comms open, keep your eyes open, and uh, any trouble, contact me immediately. Never fight alone. I nod and smile. It's up to you, friend. All right. Um, where is Mudu? So we know that um, Kane, no, I mean Zane and um, Gurker are going off together. Um, right. Yeah, what I'm about with them Mudu? so far. Okay, you're going I'm, to I'm go. Waiting. Okay, you're going to go with um, Kane. I mean, excuse me, Zane and Gurker. <laughs> That's going to be Wait, there is. Is it? Uh, Kane mm-hmm. is going with Gurker? No. No, no, no. no. Zane. Zane, Zane is Z. going with Gurker. <laughs> Roger. If it makes it easier, uh, you can Kane. call him Z. <laughs> right. and, and, uh, and Kane um, is, uh, well, obviously, I want to, to minimize the chances of everybody suddenly dying, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Kane. <laughs> okay. So so at least we, there won't yeah. be one. One V whatever in a fight. Yeah, seriously. How about uh, us two uh, and uh, and Johnny? Okay, okay. I just want to know how to how to keep y'all separated. Um, so I will go uh, in uh, alphabetical order of your real names first. You know, to help keep mm-hmm. help it be easier for me to keep track of. Um, sure. so with that, Kane, Johnny Six, and Mudu. Where do y'all want to go down here? Anywhere specific, or just wander around? Um, so, I originally my, my original thoughts were, and this is me thinking of it, like, mm-hmm. but uh, my original thoughts were to to come to this uh, this area to find some some information on where we could find our our um, our target. But it kind of looks <laughs> like we found him. Yeah, I think he's gonna be like pretty powerful for us right now. Uh, yeah, and I obviously wouldn't want to barge right in. Yeah, but, uh, I wouldn't either. <laughs> I, I might, I might want to ask somebody at the door what what what's what the deal is, or someone close by. Like, uh, I would find someone and uh, 
and uh, point towards the, the place and and generally uh, go like <laughs> as in to ask for uh, for information. What can you tell me about this place? Um. Okay, so you're pointing to somebody to ask them, right? I want to make sure that okay. Uh, the person uh kind of jerks a little bit, but. Uh, makes no other move. Um, you you notice that they do not follow where you're pointing at. And uh, <clears throat> Johnny Six goes, he said that he wanted to know all of the information that about the Black Rancor that you have. He is just a curious Ewok and, it's, and he's fixing to tell them that he is taking on the bounty hunt to try to get all of this money. I punch him in the knee very quickly. <laughs> and he is going to... Ow! You know, for such a little fellow, that really hurts me, and I am metal. Um, the person that you were talking to and uh, looks over towards the sound of the uh, droid's voice. Oi, what do you want to ask about him for? People who ask about him have a bad habit of winding up maimed in some way. Hence, and he points to his... Um, eyes which are scarred shut. Why? Oh, oh, I can't see a bloody thing. Oh, no. um, imagine a man like you can't see but still needs to eat. How about some credits for, for your time? Ah, uh, I'll take them. I'll tell you what I know, which ain't much. <laughs> but I too was a bounty hunter at one time. Oh. Have you ever heard of Hans the Forgetful? I seem to have forgotten <laughs> about him. Ah, everybody else forgets about me, too. I took on the bounty for old Black Ranker, and he caught me. And after hours of torture, he decided that he wanted to pluck out each of my eyeballs one at a time. Hmm. Uh, then he made me eat them. Oh, no. Uh, he's a bad one, he is. But rumors are that he doesn't stay on a planet very long that he hops around from place to place to find it hard to catch him. Hmm. Very smart strategy indeed. Do you know how long he's been at it? I, that's something that no one really knows that I've ever run across. And then the droid starts speaking, well, if you were to look back at the database, after once graduating from college, and having a failed career as an entrepreneur in the oh. spice industry, he was, and I assume somebody would hit him. Oh, and go hit him. on. <laughs> <laughs> how long? How long ago was? When did he? How long ago was it since he graduated, John? Oh, uh, this was approximately forty-five years ago, according to my calculations. But this calculation is coming from a medical droid this that was. This time I just <laughs> stare at him. Oh, what is it, my little friend? I keep staring. Did, do, do I have something in my in my data teeth? <laughs> did did I eat some some kind of bad information? <laughs> no, no, it was just too much information, my friend. It's okay. Han, here's twenty five credits <laughs> for you, friend. Huh. Uh, I I appreciate it. It'll allow me to eat for a few days. Did Did you have any more questions? Uh, no, do. <laughs> How many are with him? Uh, the droid translates. The guy laughs and our Hans laughs and says, if anybody could ever count that high. Mm. They, no one really knows how many soldiers or members of his organization there are. They tend to fluctuate. If they upset him, he murders them. Mm. If their numbers get too low, he takes in more people until they disappoint him. Then, then he seems to murder them, but the thing is that I think, I think, and this is rumor, have you, that he eats his victims, or feeds them to a pet that he has. Mm -hmm. I, I wish that I could tell you exactly what he looks like, but, right. but I, I cannot. That's okay. I can give you one last piece of advice, though. Be oh. careful who you ask about him, because you do not know if they work for him or not. He has people in his organization from the top of the city 
all the way down here. Ooh, thank you. Ah, uh, you're very welcome, kind sir. Uh, anything else y'all wish to ask him before we flip over to um, Zane and Gurkha? Uh, I think I'm good. Okay. If we're good and walk away, I want to tell Johnny, like, Johnny, we, we don't want to tell people about the bounty that might draw attention to us. Please don't mention it again. Okay, sir, I will not mention the bounty that is Shh. after the... Oh, I, I did it again, didn't I? <laughs> 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 uh, we, we will flip over to um, uh, Zane and Gurkha. Uh, so, Zane, you find yourself in a very seedy alley type way. Um, it's a bunch of shanties lined up. And I assume that you would want to follow uh, Gurkha to where he gets his uh, payment, in other words, his uh, get his spice. Uh, um, I got. He's got his hood up, you know. Like he has a different. He has a dark set of like clothes, like not black, but they're like darker looking, mm-hmm. and not the traditional like Jedi robes. Right. So he doesn't stick out, you know, like some people. Like a Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So he's got his hood up, and he's he's following. You know, kind of this beside, but kind of also a little bit behind, kind of watching their back. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's all right. All right, big man. Let's let's go feed your addiction. Um, you uh follow him, and he takes many twists and turns. Uh, and it's almost like you're both getting lost, but you wind up at a little like hut. Um. That it's not well maintained, but it's lovingly maintained. If that makes any sense, um, they have made this little place their home. Um, Gurkha uh, knocks on the left window, knocks on the right window, knocks at the top of the door, at the bottom, and then in the center three times rapidly. Um, the door opens up. <laughs> Go ahead. I was just gonna say Zane makes a note of that. <laughs> uh, um. So he he walks into the little hut or little hubble, whatever you want to call it, and um, inside there is a smallish female alien of some species that I'm just not sure of. Um, she looks up at uh, Gurkha and smiles and says, "Ah, it's nice to have you back again. Ready for another order so soon?" and um, you notice that she is speaking in Wookiee. Do you speak Wookiee? I do. Okay. Um, oh, so see. you understand what she's saying, and uh, Gurkha points to to you and begins speaking and um, saying, yes, we, we are going on a mission. We got hired to transport something um, to a, another location and maybe going for a while and I need to make sure that I have enough supply to to last me and she looks up at him and says bill it to the same account and he nods and says yes to the to the brothers and she nods and says at your normal location and he nods and she says at uh, shuttle bay 672 and he nods again and she says it will be there in the morning. And he bows to her and looks to you and says, Did you want to ask her anything? He is going, uh, Zane's going to ask the lady, also in Wookiee, uh, Do you know any good places where I can cure, you know, any type of blast? She looks at you, What kind of blaster do you want? looking for something small more like a pistol concealed are you looking for a holdout blaster or would you like one a bit higher tech good quality i don't want nothing that's gonna blow my hand off you do realize this will be black marketed correct of course i need it untraceable can't have certain people finding out using stuff like that. Hmm. again what kind do you want do you want your typical holdout 
which can be hidden very easily. Or Try would you like? You me? She smiles and Gurkha leans over and says to you, she can get anything. And she smiles and will say to you, he is right. I can get anything. It's just, can you afford what I get? Show me what, how good you can get and uh, we'll talk creds. Uh, um, give me a minute to uh, look up the prices of those. All right. Yeah. She sits down at the computer and begins to look through her inventory. I don't know. What do I have here? Uh, Which are you looking for again? Um, I'm looking up blasters. I uh, wish you could. Hmm. Let me see if I search it. There we go. Found it. Uh, uh, I have a. Uh, I can get you a blaster pistol. Uh, let's see. Uh, I can get you a blaster rifle, but that seems to be too big for what you're looking for. Um, let's see if there's any more. Ah, uh, 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 blaster, no rifle, no. You want no rifle? I can get you a disruptor pistol. Uh, that one will definitely cost you, though. Uh, uh, hmm. Yeah. She can get you a holdout pistol, a regular blaster pistol, and a disruptor pistol. Those three fit your needs, sir. How much for the disruptor? Ah. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, you want it black market? Uh, I paid 3000 for it. Well, actually, I took it off of a corpse. I'll sell it to you for 12,000 credits. Okay. Uh, I figured it was a little out of the price range, but, you know, you gotta make money and it is undetectable. Detectable. So for someone who can take it off of a dead corpse. Uh, Somebody got booted. I wonder if it was Craig. Uh, uh, it was uh, Fernando. Yeah, Craig's here. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I hate it when Craig disconnects. Um, but yeah, I took it off of a dead corpse. Hmm. And she smiles. Okay. Because I am the one who killed the original owner. He looks, he's like, gives a nod. She nods back. Don't cross me is what I told him. And... He thought that he could. <laughs> he learned differently. Let's see, how about a basic blaster pistol? Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. 600 credit. Untraceable. And I'm oh, telling you what I, I'm doing here. Whatever the original price says, like in the Star Wars like handbook, I'm multiplying it by three. Because it's black market, you know, and those things are marked right. up. I promise you, you won't find better quality. Well, how about you lower the price and you'll have a return customer? She looks at you. Hmm. 500 credits with the guarantee that you come back and buy more. And that you keep this secret. Because I'm trusting you because of Gurkha's repeat business. Cutting you an extra 100 off to make it 500. I'll take it. I won't push my luck this since this she is smiles. the start of a new. Yes. She smiles and you notice rows of sharp teeth in her mouth. Very good. We don't want to make enemies of each other, I'm sure. Pleasure. Gives over, doing this. gives over the credits and then he gives over another. Uh, if someone was just wondering about a little info about a certain black, you know. Would you be able to tell me anything? Hmm, I can tell you a little, not much, but if you give me some time, I will deliver the information along with the blaster pistol to Gurkha's normal location for deliveries. I hope this will be the start of a more transaction. She smiles. Me too. Gonna look at Gurkha like, you ready to go, big man? He nods and gives 
the uh, little uh, elderly woman a hug before they leave. And he looks you and says, it's better that we not stay down here too terribly long. Agreed. Do we have Fernando back with us? Yes, he's muted. Yeah. You can keep talking. We don't hear you. It's all good. Okay, how about that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we hear you now. Um, Sweet. So, uh, what you, what, all that you missed was uh, Zane bought a holdout, or not a holdout pistol, like a uh, blaster pistol um, that he is going to have delivered along with information on uh, the Black Ranker or what she's able to get about him uh, delivered in the morning along with the contents of uh, Gurkha's order. Okay. Uh, um, like I said, that's pretty much all that it was. Uh, he paid uh, 500 for the pistol along with 100 credits for the information. Um, mm-hmm. And now they're leaving and we will say that y'all uh, had a uh, location to get back to like a uh, meetup point. Um... Is there anything else that any of you wish to do while you're down here? I think I'm good. It for now. Yeah. Alright, um, well that, we'll say that y'all are heading back to the, um, upper portion of the city. Um, it is approximately like, we'll say nine o'clock at night, like earth time. Uh, and do y'all wish to sleep in the ship, find rooms up here? Or, uh, you know, I guess you could continue exploring, like, in bars and all up here, if you so wish. Mm-hmm. I think I'd, I'd ask Gurkha, hey, big man, you want a drink? Mm-hmm. And he immediately, like, turns and walks into a cantina. <laughs> uh, I'd follow, follow him in. <laughs> um, as he sits down at a table... Uh, the waitress, you know, it's another, uh, we'll say like a, a Rodian, um, male walks over, has a big mug, like he's bouncing it on his head as he walks over to Gurkha and slides <laughs> it onto the table and Gurkha goes, Nrah! and immediately like dives into the drink with his head first. <laughs> um, I'm gonna look around the canteen to see, just like, see what kind of people's in there. Uh, roll me, um, does everybody else want to look around as well? Uh, yeah. Okay, um, everybody that wants to look around, roll me a perception check. Ooh, 13 for me. Okay, you won't notice this. <laughs> Unfortunately. Dirty 20. Uh, um, so with your 20, you notice, um... Uh, I got a 14. Oh, you won't notice it either. I was looking for a 15. Uh, you notice this table that has two or three, let's say three people at it, and they all seem to have a black swatch on their, on their arms. Um, it, it's like on their clothing, but, you know, it's like, like an armband, uh, sitting at a table, um, leaned over like whispering to one another the the music and all is kind of loud in the cantina so they're leaned over whispering but they're having to talk louder than normal to be heard but the ambiance is too loud for you to be able to make out what they're saying you just notice the black armband um on their shirt going to get Kane catch Kane's eye and kind of motion over discreetly Oh, I'll, I'll, are you pointing at like the armband or to like go towards you? I, I'm. I use force message. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I say, Boy Scout, the three over in the corner. Did you notice the band on their arm? Do now that you point them. That's not good. That probably belongs to the. And the way they're over there whispering does not look good. Hmm. Indeed. Where's our? Where's Mudu? Yeah, I look. I'm um, under the table looking <laughs> for another one. <laughs> oh, it's... Uh, and as Moodoo is looking around, there's like this flexible straw that comes under the table <laughs> into uh, Moodoo's oh. vision. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the, fle- the flexible straw is in uh, 
Gurkha's big old tankard. Sorry, I dropped out there for a minute. Oh, okay. Um, a, a, as you're under the table, a flexible shawl um, comes down to right about your mouth level and it is connected to uh, Gurkha's big old tankard of alcohol. <laughs> 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 so I noisily slurp. Ugh. <laughs> um, roll me a roll me a Constitution check. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that is a a ten. You hiccup, and you all feel a body fall on the ground. <laughs> Um, tell us how you pass out drunk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, so I, I, I sense some kind of commotion uh, above me. Uh, the Jedi seem to be doing their their weird thing. I don't really understand. Um, the, uh, the, the drink is reasonably tasty, but uh, that's not why I'm drinking it. Um, it sort of sneaks up on me. Um, so I, I uh, try to st- stand up a little bit straighter as I do that. I, I put my head on the bottom side of the table, the other side. Um, well, that hurts a little bit. I look around, try to uh, straighten out a little bit, hit the table again, and I'm passed out. Ugh. <laughs> right, I imagine right as I'm like telling uh, Zane, where is Mudu? And we hear like, yeah. um, oh. <laughs> Uh, Gurkha will look down under the table, and then you see him just shaking his head from side to side. Um, and he looks without even looking. He's just gonna be like, "What a lightweight." <laughs> um, so uh, Gurkha will hold his uh, shawl to you, like, huh? uh, "Not, not now, Gurkha. We we have something we need to be focused." On. He nods and pulls out a little vial of spice. Like, like, <laughs> like exactly, <laughs> and looks at this drink, looks at the spice, looks back at this drink, and then sticks the uh, straw in his mouth and pours it down this, pours the spice down his nose at the same time. Uh, and you can tell now that he is getting near the end of his drink and beginning to get uh, quite intoxicated. And you see him hollering, and you hear him hollering and yelling and waving his arms. And um, Johnny Six says, the last time that he did this, he got into a bar fight and took on everyone in the bar, along with some stormtroopers and some other ruffians of all sorts. It did not end pretty. He wound up in jail for like three weeks, and that was not a good thing. He nearly lost his job. And we, he cannot lose his job this time. And as he is talking, Gurkha stands up and bumps him, which causes Johnny Six to shut up. And he picks up um, Mudu, like, rah, rah, rah. and he's glaring at the men with the armband and looks like he is fixing to throw Mudu at them. <laughs> 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 So I'm assuming this will wake me up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm being waved in the air, I... As, as, you, as you're being waved, you do wake up, although you are intoxicated. <laughs> right. What do the oh. two of the Jedis do? I'd like to <laughs> touch Gurker and cast... Use my effect mind to... <laughs> Use a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, I don't think that's going to be very hard. <laughs> wisdom saving throw DC 13. Uh, uh, let me get there. Well, he well while he's doing that, um, I want to look over to the I want to you know, check over with the other three the three guys over there. Mm-hmm. See if, what they're doing now. You said DC of 13. Correct. I rolled a 13 and I get a plus one. Okay. So he doesn't. Okay, he doesn't know that I tried casting on him. It would have just given me uh, advantage on charisma checks with him. Okay. But, but I still want to try to calm down. I'm like, calm, calm down, Greg. All right. We have a job to do. If you don't do your job, you won't be able to get more spice. 
Oh. <laughs> he, he, uh, and he's just holding uh, Moody like, up over his head. Like he, he's forgetting that he's holding him up there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> just here. Oh. Put him down, please. Oh. He lays Moody on the table and pats his head. <laughs> good, good. Now sit with me. He, he looks at you. Mm-hmm. Let me. I want to roll this. Okay, he's good. He he's not pass out drunk yet. Um, <laughs> he looks at you all, and then Johnny Six says, "I think we ought to get him out of here before he orders another one." Indeed. And you see him beginning. You see um, Gurkha beginning to raise his hand as though he wants a second drink. Oh, gee. <laughs> Which the, the droid would translate, Are you insane? What's that? <laughs> I'm never drinking anything you give me again. Get out of here. <laughs> and Gurkha's like, Rah! And patting him on the head. And he tells you it was called um, Kessel Spice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kicker, um, how, about, how about you go check the ship with uh, Johnny? We'll catch up. Alright. Which means, are you sure? I believe so. We'll, we'll be there shortly. And he looks back and asks you again, can I get one to go? <laughs> Which is like translated, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I just shrugged. Oh, sorry, he said no. <laughs> So he, him and uh, Johnny Six walk out of the cantina heading back to the um, space station and to the, uh, to the ship. Whew. Zing, any updates? Uh, any updates? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Not yet. She said it would be delivered whenever uh, Gurkha's order was delivered. No, on the, uh, the three in the corner. <laughs> Oh, um, I must have missed your question whenever I was, like, rolling for Gurkha. What was your question? Uh, I was saying while while Kane was calming down uh, Gurkha and stuff, I was checking the, the three in the corner to see what they were doing, if they were noticing. Uh, or- no, they would, they would not be noticing you. They'd still be, like, their heads been over whispering. Um, just, just sitting at the table whispering, like, paying nobody any other attention, using the loudness of the cantina to not really conduct business but to talk about maybe i mean any talk about anything you know just so they wouldn't be overheard would there would there be a way to get to sneak closer to get an earshot to be able to yeah you can um you can roll me a stealth check recheck my stealth could do for me as i see him trying to sneak off i'm like who do are you you stable enough to to sneak over there? Make sure it's all right. Her? Um. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll I'll try and sneak around towards them. Um, and roll me a stealth check with disadvantage. <laughs> right. Because you are a drunk Ewok. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and the odds he are not in my favor. I got. <laughs> he could be the distraction. <laughs> <laughs> I got four. For- Four plus four, eight. So disadvantage <laughs> minus one. Uh, no, you roll it again. You ah. roll it twice and take the lower yeah. number. Ah, sorry, gotcha. That's fine. That's fine. <clears throat> okay, so that's a, an eight. Yeah. Okay. Not um. So uh, they will notice you trying to <laughs> walk right. over there, and they will immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Well, halfway over there, you start singing. You forget what you're doing, and <laughs> you start singing. Um, and as soon as they notice a, this, you got a what? I got a 21. Uh, oh. um, you hear them say something about the mine. And right as you hear them say that, they stop talking because they hear um, and see Mudu approaching, singing and swaying drunkenly. <laughs> and then you hear them uh, say, "Go ahead." 
I was gonna ask, do these three do any of them look like the five from earlier? Um no. Oh. No. Um and with this they look at look at Moodoo and say, What do you think you're doing? Get back to your table or leave. We don't want your kind in here. Uh, so I I'm look up at use... them and swing on one foot and uh, and walk right back. <laughs> you, you swing. You swing at one of them. No, no. no, no, no. I swing. Or, I swing around, balanced on one foot, and walk. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I want to make <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure. Uh, so um, you uh, yeah. you swing around and head back to your table then. Uh, um, drunkenly, you manage to get back to your table and, and, and sit there, uh, and, and, and sway back and forth. Uh, what would you say, in, uh, Zane? Oh, no, uh, never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, after this, they will begin to be extremely wary of what they say and they will keep a watch on their on everybody um so what would y'all like to do now stay in the bar it's it's roughly about we'll say 10 o'clock at night um and remember that the ship should be loaded at some point in the night and uh hopefully you will leave be able to leave in the morning so um it's a not gonna get any more info. Zane will motion towards Kane and then the door start heading out. Yeah. You know, from where she he's at. A nod and uh try to get uh Moodoo. Like Moodoo, it's time to go, my friend. I, I nod sleepily at them. Uh, um start we y'all want to head back to the space station? Yeah, the ship. Okay. Uh so y'all managed to get back there with no incident. And uh, they are sleeping quarters on the ship. You can sleep. There are some bunks in the actual space station here uh, that you can sleep on. Um, whichever one you actually prefer doing is up to you. It's just uh, like flavor type stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, Did, were you guys successful on your on getting uh, his? Crutch, let's say. Yeah, supply will be delivered sometime before the journey. Hmm, okay. Do, you, uh, do I need to uh, be around there, make sure everything goes according to plan, or trust them? I think he's been doing this a few times. It won't hurt to keep an eye out. Those guys back in the cantina, I only got one th- one piece of information. They are interested in the mine. Hmm. Um, and you will, uh, I should have said this, you will be able to recognize one of them by a scar running from, like, the top of his left ear to the corner of his, uh, like, the left side of his, um, mouth. Mm. So he will, you will be able to recognize him by that. Let's see, one of them, one of them we, wait, do, do we both know this person or just me. No, um, from now on, you'll be able to recognize as him as one of those that was at that table talking. That oh. uh, he said the actual word "mine." Mm. Oh, oh, I recognize. Cause, oh, one of yeah, them cause... got cut up. <laughs> I'll tell you, one of them got cut up. So, oh, where scars around the face? Oh. One leading back to his ear. Keep an eye out for that one. Uh, uh, which of those? Anyone that, that has the armband. Indeed. Uh, which of the uh, sleeping ones are closer to like the loading bay? Um, talking about the bunks. Yeah. Um, and, and where the ship is, the ship itself has um uh, four sleeping bunks. Um, like actually inside of it, sleeping quarters, yeah. and the ship has uh like a little room which has four bunks in it as well. Hmm. Um, I mean they are sleepable they're not exactly there for comfort though yeah are any of them closer to like the loading bay or like the loading um storage um they're probably about equal distance uh the only real difference is the um their location i mean one of them's like attached to the space station the other one's attached to the actual ship yeah i'd like to go the ship okay um i mean overall there's really no difference because it's such a uh, compacted type area. Yep. 
um, you will be able. They will be able to load the ship, and it would probably be quieter inside the ship than it would be uh, to sleep outside of the, mm-hmm. like in the actual space station. So, is everybody going to uh, go ahead? Oh, I was just gonna say. I think that maybe at least one of us should be outside the ship, one inside the ship. You do. Hmm. Huh? Is there? A, you have a preference, sir? I'll I'll stay outside. The ship. <clears throat> okay. From the outside. Uh, um. So we're we going to set up a watch. Yeah, I think it'd be good. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's too too many interested parties, and we are mm-hmm. security. All right, so um, who is going to take the first watch? The drunken Ewok, <laughs> um, the drunk uh, and high Wookiee, or one of the Jedis? Or the droid that could watch while everybody slept? Let's, because it's still early, let's let the droid watch first. That uh-huh. way we can get a mm-hmm. little bit of rest, at least. Yeah, and uh, uh, Mud- maybe Mudu, would you be up for taking the last uh, watch. Maybe you'd be good by then. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, I'm outside the ship due to uh, past trauma. My uh, my adventure companions don't know about or probably understand. I'm not particularly inclined in sleeping in, in mm-hmm. cargo holds anymore. <laughs> so uh-huh. I uh, I uh, lay down next to the droid. Uh, oh. Also being pretty used to, to rushing it out, so uh, I'm just gonna sleep out here. I just I just nod at him. I'm like, oh, uh, what are you doing? There's best inside. Do you wanna come in? <laughs> and I I wave. Okay. Uh, and oh. <laughs> and with that, we will stop for this week.